Hey, if you have your Bible with you, can you go ahead and open that to the book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 and beginning in verse 16. I want to read something to you today and I want to talk today about winning. And I brought a pool up here with me today. I'll explain what this means in just a moment. Um, while we're sitting in this room right now, there is a collision that is going on right now, even in this room, between two different realms. One of them is called the natural realm. Everybody say natural realm. Now, the natural realm is not a woman who does not wear makeup. The natural realm is it's where we live and breathe. It's our flesh and, and, and blood. There is what we call the natural realm. Reach over and touch somebody next to you. Okay, just touch somebody right now. Okay, how many of you felt that? If you didn't feel it, we need to pray for you right now, all right? Okay, we call that the natural realm. And there is this natural realm that we live and breathe and we have our being in as human beings created in the image of God. There is what we call a natural realm. But look at me, there's a collision with the natural realm, with what we call the spirit realm. Everybody say spirit realm. And the spirit realm, I have come to understand, is far more real than the natural realm. And unfortunately, what we've done, and I have done this in many, many ways in my life, and about two years ago, God taught me something that has changed my life forever, that I don't have to visit the spirit realm, I can live in the spirit realm. Even though I live in this natural realm, I can go into the realm of the spirit, and I can live there every day. How many believe that with me? Okay. Now the Bible says this in Psalm chapter 91, it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. There's a key word in that verse and it says, he who dwells in the secret place. Everybody say dwells. The word dwells there means somebody who is constantly, uh, victoriously, someone who is consistently and, and, and systematically staying in the presence of God. Not just those who visit on Sunday morning at 1030. We've got to learn how this is not just something in church. As a matter of fact, the smallest part of your week is here in this church, yes? So how can I carry? See, it's wonderful in here. See, nobody's cussing in here. Isn't that wonderful? Because if they did, we would either lay hands on them and cast the devil out of them, or we'd usher them out in the parking lot. Is that right, Pastor? That's just not going to happen in here. So it's very, very safe in here. It's easy here in the sanctuary. Nobody's telling dirty jokes in here. Because if they did that, that would not be tolerated in the house of God. So how can I have what I have when I come in here every Sunday? How, how can I have this on a daily basis as an ongoing issue in my life? Because it's so wonderful in here. It's so peaceful in here. It's so loving in here that we even get to feel. How many of you felt the presence of God during this worship time? Hold your hand up real high so I can see it. You even felt the presence of God. So see, God comes close and we get to experience that while we're here in this room. But sometimes when we leave, we, we, we separate our life outside the church from what we have inside the church. I want you to know this is not the church. This is just the building that we gather in today. I am the church. Come on, say it with me. I am the church. Come on, scream that. I am the church. So he lives and breathes and has his being in us. As a, as a matter of fact, the Bible says you're supposed to be, you, you're to be in this world, but come on, not of this world. Now, how do we do that? I, I want to show you what God taught me and how this has changed my life, that this is not just something I visit on Sunday mornings. This is something that we can have every day that people can look at us and say, why are you so happy in a world that is so messed up? How can you be so happy? And we say, because this is not my home. Once I was lost, but now I am. Once I was blind, but now I can. So I'm drinking from another well. I found out how to live in a victorious place with Christ as an ongoing basis. It doesn't have to be every once in a while. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. You're going to have difficulties in this life. You're going to have hardships. You're going to have the attacks of the enemy. Because how many of you like me, it feels like sometimes every devil that is not busy has come to visit you. Come on. And everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Anybody else? Come on. So he said, in this world, you have tribulation. But that verse doesn't stop there. It says, but be of good cheer. Why? Because I have already overcome the world. So I want to show you. Would you look at my pool with me? I love my Spider-Man pool. Do you like that? And uh, Brother Seth gave this to me this morning. And I, I want you to look at this with me. And I want you to believe with me as an illustration that this pool represents the kingdom of God. All right? Everybody say the kingdom of God. One of the primary things that Jesus came to teach, and you can read this in the New Testament, one of the primary things that Jesus came to teach was about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. That he came to bring the kingdom of heaven among men. Yes? 
So I want you to believe with me that this pool represents the kingdom of our God. And all of the power and all of the glory and all of the miracles and all the good things and all of the joy and the triumph and the victory can be found in the kingdom of God. Do you believe that? Okay, I want you to believe with everything outside of this pool represents the kingdoms of this world. Are you with me? Okay, so I believe at any time I can step over into the pool of the kingdom of God. If I make a decision to step into that pool, I can step into that pool. Yes. So in my illustration, am I standing in the kingdom of God now? Help me. Come on. Yes or no? Okay. Am I standing in it now? Okay. One more time. Help me. Am I standing in it now? Come on. Indulge me. Am I standing in it now? How did I get in here? I made a willful choice to step out of that realm and to step over into this realm and believe that I can have all of the good things of God that God can help me. I want you to understand we as human beings and all of God's creation as the highest form of God's creation, I want you to know we face this battle of the realm of the natural and the realm of the spirit in different ways. See, some things in this world are matter only. They're matter only. This pulpit is matter only. This microphone is matter only. This building is matter only. Are you with me? Okay. Some things are spirit only. Angels are spirits. Yes. Demons are spirits. Yes. God is spirit. Yes. Look at me and I want to show you this. We are the only thing in all of God's creation that has to live in both realms at the same time of both the natural realm and the spirit realm. And I can promise you it's a lot easier to live in the realm of the the natural than it is to live in the realm of the spirit because our flesh is constantly fighting us. Because our flesh only knows one thing and it's called immediate gratification. Make me happy now, give it to me now, I want it now. So I have to fight this and I have to make a willful decision that God, I want everything thing that I have in the realm of the spirit that when we come in here, is it happy here? Do you love this place? Do you feel the presence of God? Does God meet with you? Do you meet with God? Do you feel his presence? Do you feel his joy? Do you feel his victory? Come on, help me a little bit. Do you feel that when you come in this house? You feel that. Well, listen to me. We believe we find that in the realm of the spirit in what we call the kingdom of God. That These kingdoms coexist at the same time, both of the natural realm and the spirit realm. You can see it in the movies and the entertainment today. That there's these witch movies that are coming out everywhere because they always want to talk about the realm of their power of these witches. How many of you know what I'm talking about? That the Avengers movies, that these people have superpowers. They have all of these things. Where do they get those superpowers? And there's that power. They they can go into a a, a portal or a, a, a realm and they can find that power. We how many, how many of you understand where they got that idea from? They got it from the realm of God and the people of God that when there's this clashing of these two worlds of the natural realm and the spirit realm, we have to make a choice as a child of God that I'm not going to let the natural realm rule me. I'm going to let the spirit realm rule me. So am I standing in the kingdom of God right now in my illustration? Come on, help me. Am I standing in it now? Come on, indulge me. Am I standing in it now? One more time. Help me. Am I standing in it now? How did I get in here? I made a willful choice to step out of that realm and step over into this realm and say all of the good things of God that I have. Every time I come in the house of God, I can have with me every day. Because, see, I want you to understand that the kingdom of God is portable, that I can take it with me everywhere. It's not some building that I go to. It's everywhere I go. So how many of you have ever been sitting at a traffic light here in Gunnersville that they last about 27 minutes? And you feel like you're sitting there forever at that traffic light. And so I was yesterday when we left after uh, the events here at the church, I was sitting at one of the traffic lights and it felt like it took forever for that light to change. So I just threw the pool down and I, I, I stepped over in it and I turned a worship song on and I began to sing the song of the Lord. And all of a sudden I felt what was here in this house a moment ago. I felt sitting at the traffic light right down here by the high school. 
And, and how many of you have ever been driving down the road and you're doing 55 miles an hour and Sister Smell Fungus uh, drives out in front of you and she's doing about 20 miles an hour and you have to slow down on your way. You can either get angry with Sister Smell Fungus because she's driving so slow or you can throw the pool down and you can step over in the pool and you can begin to call out to the name of the Lord. You begin to give worship to our God and all of the power of God can again come right where you are. While you're walking to the halls of your school, you can make a decision if you want to. And it's a willful decision of all the stupidity and all the craziness that we hear in the public schools today that I'm going to make a choice. I'm not going to listen to the stupid things that they do. I'm just going to throw the pool down. I'm going to put my ear, uh, ear, uh, uh, my ear, earbuds in. I'm going to sing the song of the Lord. And I'm not going to listen to the craziness. And I can carry this with me everywhere I go because the kingdom of God is portable. It's not bound to a building. It is tied to my heart. It is tied to your heart. So am I standing in the kingdom of God right now? Come on, help me. Am I standing in it now? Just indulge me. Come on, am I standing in it now? Am I standing in it now? How did I get in here? I made a willful choice to step out of that realm and get over in this realm. Read read Luke chapter 4, verse 16 with me. They're going to put it on the screen, and I want you to read along with me. It says this. He, Jesus, went to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, which was his custom. And he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Why? Because he has, come on, what's the next word? anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fast on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus tells us on this particular day that he walks into the synagogue. They hand him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He begins to read a 700-year prophecy that the spirit of the sovereign Lord will rest on a man and and there will be that one word, anointed. Come on, say that with me. Anointed. That we know when the anointing is and we know when the anointing is not. Yes? uh, I've seen people who can sing and they have the most beautiful voice in the world, but there's no anointing on them. And then I've seen people sing who have very, very little talent, but the anointing of God was on them and miracles took place when they sang. Yes. So I want you to know it says that Jesus was anointed. Why? To give good news to the poor. What is good news to the poor? You don't have to be poor anymore. What's good news to the blind? Come on, help me. What's good news to the deaf? Come on, help me. What's good news to the dead? Come on. Jesus said that the reason that the anointing came on me was not just so I could have a good time when I go to church. Not just so I could have a goose bump when I stand in the house of God. But I can carry that anointing with me that wherever I am, I can step over into the realm of the spirit. And I can give good news to the poor. I can give sight to the blind. I can give hearing to the deaf. I can proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Because people are looking for answers right now. People are genuinely scared right now. Because of the pandemic and the fact that you cannot trust this government and and because of all that is going on politically right now, people are looking for answers and they're looking to the house of God right now, maybe in a way they have not in a long, long time. Does your God really work for you? Does your God really help you? And the answer is, come on, emphatically, 100%, come on, yes. And we have to show them that what's different about me, that I am not like you because I am a believer. I have tasted something of the realm of the spirit. I've experienced something with my God that I don't just have when I go to church, but I have it every day wherever I go. Am I standing in it now? Am I standing in it now? What happened? I can make a willful choice to step into that realm or I can make a willful choice to step out of that realm. You can live in your natural strength and listen to me, your natural strength will never change your marriage. Your natural strength will never change your finances. Your natural strength will never change change a culture. Or we can live in the realm of the spirit and have spirit strength and have me believe the spirit of God can change my marriage. And the spirit of God can change my finances. And the spirit of God can change my culture because God, I want to live in the realm of the spirit. So I want to preach to you for the next few minutes on a message with this title, Stay in the Pool. 
Come on, say that with me. Stay in the pool. Come on, say, say it real loud. Stay in the pool. I want to show you something, that three things that I believe we have to do that God's taught me, that if I'm going to stay in this pool, i got to do three things. Number one, i got to pursue this pool. Everybody say pursue. Secondly, i got to protect this pool. Everybody say protect. But the third most important thing is i got to practice in this pool. Everybody say practice. All right, I want to show you this. Number one, i got to pursue the pool. Let me read a scripture to you in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Come on, it's on the screen. Can we all read this out loud? Read it with me. Come on. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Can we read that one more time out loud? Come on. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. God says it's not a mystery. He says, I'm not hidden from you. He says, you can find me if you seek me with some of your heart. With a little bit of your heart, with all of your heart, God says you can come away and you can find me if you seek me. And that takes effort for me to make a choice that God, I want to pursue you and I want to be with you. I wanted to pursue my wife so that I could marry her. Now she was dating a a, a really tall guy, about six, six, who looked like Captain America. He looked just like the guy who plays Captain America. He had shoulders about that wide. He had bright blonde hair. He had dark tan skin, big blue eyes. He had muscles everywhere. But he didn't know how to treat her. And she broke up with him. And so when she broke up with him, I moved in for the kill. And and I wrote her a letter and I sprayed cologne on it because I saw that in a movie. And I called her on the phone, and I went by her house. I sent her flowers, and I want you to know that three years later, I married that girl, and we've been married now for 39 years, and Captain America lost. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now, it was because I let her know I wanted to be with her. I wanted her to be with me. I want you to understand in America, we, 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 we've bought the whole American dream. Uh, can all you get, get all you can, and sit on the can. We've bought that whole American dream that it's all about what we can get, all about what we can find, that it's all about me, me, I, 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 I. But God says, no, that's not it. It's all about him. And that when we find him, we find everything that we need. I feel sorry for people who don't know what we know. I feel sorry because they don't know how to handle their issues. They don't know how to handle their pressures. But I found out that I can step over into this realm of the spirit at any time, any any day, anywhere, no matter where I am. I was flying uh, from California a few days ago and 35,000 feet in the air. And I'm just listening to my worship music. And I'm listening to some teaching from the, the late Billy Graham. And, and, and the presence of God came to that airplane with me because I stepped out of this realm. And I stepped over this realm because I gave time to pursue. Pursue what God wants to be in me. Yes? I had a youth group years ago when I was a youth pastor at Knollwood Assembly of God in Mobile, Alabama. And we had a very large youth group. We had about 300 students coming to our, our youth ministry at that time. It was a pretty large church. And, uh, I, I, but when they would come together, I, I would take an offering uh, for, for, for our youth ministry, and I'd get $3.15 out of 300 kids. So I just could not get them to give. And, and so one day before they came in, I taped dollar bills underneath all the chairs they were sitting in. One dollar bills, five dollar bills, ten dollar bills, and one twenty dollar bill. I was a youth pastor. All right. And I taped money underneath all the chairs all around the room. And when they came in, it was a room about this big. When they came in, I said, under the chair you're sitting in, uh, as we receive our offering tonight, I want you to know there may be a one or a five or a ten or a twenty dollar bill. When I say go, whatever you can find is yours. On your mark, get set, go. Boom, the room exploded. And they were diving over chairs. They were pulling hair. They were, they were flipping chairs over. And they were holding up, I got a dollar, I got a 10, I got a 20. And while they were all on the floor, I said, stop. And they looked at me stunned. And I said, when you begin to seek God the way you're seeking those dollar bills, you're going to be the kind of giver God wants you to be. And we got the best offering we'd ever had that night, Pastor Keith, uh, Pastor Gary. Best offering we'd ever had. Now, it was my money, but we got the best offering that, that we'd ever had before. See, we've, we've bought this whole thing that what can I get? I want you to understand, it says in Jeremiah 29, we can find God 
If we seek him, if we seek him with all of our heart, that means God can come and sit in your bedroom with you. Come on. That means God can drive down the road with you. Come on. That means God can be on the job with you. That means God could be in the high school again. I just wish I could be in high school again. Knowing what I know now. Oh, if I could be in high school again. I'd get the biggest Jesus t-shirt I could find. I mean, big Jesus letters. And I'd get that big family edition Bible that my grandmother had, you know, weighs about 40 pounds. And I'd walk up and down the halls of the school and I'd sing yes Jesus loves me you're going to hell yes Jesus because I know the worst thing they can do is beat me up the absolute worst thing they can do is kill me there's no way I can lose so no matter what is going on around me politically economically athletically spiritually mentally I can step over into the realm of the spirit if I just make a willful decision to step out of this realm and step over in this realm am I standing in it right now come on scream it am I standing in it now am I standing in it now am I standing in it now come on indulge me am I standing in it now how did I get in here I made a decision to step out of that realm and step over this realm. What pastor is teaching you in these moments before the service as you come and pray is that the realm of the spirit is not just something every once in a while. The realm of the spirit is not just something when you come in here, but you can have the realm of the spirit anytime, any day, anywhere. If you make a willful choice to ask, if he said, if you ask, it will be, if you seek, you will, if you knock, the door will be. So it's up to me. I have to do the asking. I have to do the seeking. I have to do the knocking. Or I'm going to be bound to this natural realm, and this natural realm is all I'm going to get. But if I step over in this realm, then I get all of his power, all of his glory, and all of his ability alive in me. Yes? Hallelujah. Come on, we got got to pursue the pool. Everybody say pursue. Second thing I want to show you is we got to protect the pool. Everybody say protect. We've got to protect the pool. I want to read a scripture to you in James chapter 4. Verses 7 and 8. It's on the screen. Would you read along with me? Can we read this together? Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Stay right there. Don't go to the, stay, go back to verse 7. Come on, can we read that one again? Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now we as Christians, we love that verse right there. That the, the devil will have to flee from us. We like that. Resist the devil. We like that part. But how many of you know every promise comes with a condition? Everything that God provides comes with a condition. Can you go now to verse 8? I want you to read this. Now read this out loud. Come on, everybody read this. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Now this is the cost that comes in with resisting the devil that he is going to flee from us. If we can protect the pool of God's anointing, then I want you to understand that God says you can resist the devil, and he has to flee from you. You say, me? Yes, you. Yes, do that. Let me, let me show you like this. If the city of Gunnersville, Alabama, decided right now that they were going to start pouring the sewage of the city in your living room, would you let that go on for an hour? Come on, 30 minutes? Five minutes? Come on, 30 seconds? You mean you wouldn't let the city of Gunnersville throw the sewage of the city into your living room for just 30 seconds? Why wouldn't you do that? Because it's disease-ridden, it stinks, it's disgusting, it's filthy, it's ridiculous that anybody would ever let that happen. And here is where I see so many people in America trying to live. That they got one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of God. And they say, God, I want all of your glory and I want all of your power, but yet they only get a very, very small amount. When I was in Africa several years ago, I was preaching... And um, I wasn't even preaching on healing. I was preaching uh, to about 35,000 Nigerian young people. And while I was preaching, a woman who came in and sat in the front area of the church was all crippled and bent and could barely move on her cane. And while I was preaching on salvation, the power of God swept into that place. And she stood up erect. I mean, her back stood very straight. And she screamed out and began to run across that place. And the whole village knew who this woman was because they knew her name and they knew her situation and they loved her and God supernaturally healed her. Nobody touched her. Nobody laid a hand on her, but the power of God, by standing in that presence of God, God healed her. And I asked this, those leaders there in Africa, I said, why do you see so many uh, miracles here in Africa that we never see those kinds of things in America? And he said, he said this to me and I'll never forget it. He said, because American Christians want to have both ways. They want to live in the world and they want to 
have all of the power of God. And he said, they can't have it both ways. And I want you to understand if you're living this way, you're going to be so frustrated because you get a little bit of the glory of God, but you get a little bit of the taste of the things of this world. And the difficulty is we're trying to blend those two together and we can't have God's highest and best. If we can make a decision to step out of that realm and step into this realm, then you never have to be depressed. That little girl right there, stand up real quick. Yeah. When you walked in today, I think I hollered at you in the parking lot when you came in. But when you walked in, I came in and I saw you. The Lord said to tell that little girl right Right there, that I'm going to touch her with my power and I'm going to show her all of the miracles that I am capable of because you got friends pulling one way and you got God pulling the other. Yeah. And God is saying, don't, ch- don't play it this way. He's saying, sweetheart, if you'll step all the way over everything that you're looking for, he said, I'm going to lift you up to a place you never thought possible. I'm going to show you an ability you never thought you could have. And I'm going to lead many, many people into the kingdom of God through an ordinary Holy Ghost young lady standing here just like this one. What's your name? Laura, stretch your hands toward her. Come on, would you, church? Father, I thank you for this beautiful young lady. And God, what you spoke to me when she was walking in the parking lot today, that God, she'll never forget this moment. And that God, that you will anoint this young lady and that she will step into the realm of the spirit and everything that you have for her is gonna touch her and empower her. Come on, somebody shout for that young lady. Can you? Come on, you can sit down. That out of everybody in this room, God stops and points you out and says, I can do this for you. See, just like that young man right there with the beard. Would you you stand up, young man? Yeah. That God stops everything in a moment and says, an ordinary young man just like you, that you've had a lot of things taken from you in your life. You've had a lot of things stolen from your life. And it's hard for you sometimes to trust people. But the Lord says, trust in him, young man. And I saw you smile a while ago, and you look much better when you smile. And, And he said, I want you to know you can't have it this way but if you'll step all the way out of that realm and you'll step in this realm that there's some things that you're trying to ask God for right now that you need God's help with yes and God said son if you'll step away over here with me then everything that you're looking for and everything that you need is found in that pool if you'll pursue it and if you'll protect it what is your name Kyle, stretch your hands toward Kyle Church, would you? Father, I thank you for Kyle. I thank you he's in the house of God today. And I bless this precious young man. And that God, that everything that he's looking for and everything that he's asking for, let him know he can find it here in the house of God and in the presence of the living God in Jesus' name. Come on, would somebody shout for Kyle? I don't know if I've ever seen you before, and if you don't see me ever again, you haven't missed much. But if you miss what God has for you, Kyle, there are miracles. I'm just telling you, man of God, there are miracles God wants to do with the two of you and with you specifically that God's going to do in the days ahead. See, I've got to protect this pool. I can't let the sewage of the world be poured into my pool and think that I'm going to have all that God wants for me. Yes? Anybody know a story about a guy named Samson? Anybody know that story? You ever seen a, a caricature of Samson? She's usually a big muscle-bound guy, somebody who kind of looks like me. Big muscles everywhere. Shut up. All right. And, and, but if you ever seen a caricature of Samson, it's a big muscle-bound guy. And I don't think that's an accurate depiction of who Samson was. Because the Bible tells us they did not know the secret of his strength. Yes? So uh, the, the Bible says he was strong. As a matter of fact, he, he killed, the Bible says he killed a thousand men with a donkey's jawbone. I've thought about that, and I have a pretty vivid imagination. I wonder what the, the thousandth man must have felt. There's 999 men laying dead on the ground, but the last one said, I think I can get him. <laughs> Bam, he kills him too. He was strong. But the Bible says he ripped the gates out of the ground and ran to the top of the city with the gates. Yes? And if you know anything about the gates of the city at that time, they were built out of either gold or brass or stone. They weren't simple little gates like we have today. He rips them out of the ground and runs to the top of the hill with the gates of the city. He was strong, but he had a weakness. He fell in love with a beautiful Delilah. And people say, well, how do you know she was beautiful? Well, I can't imagine the devil using some ugly hag, all right? I mean, uh, sin is alluring, all right? She was probably very pleasing to the eye, and and she got his attention. And she said, tell me the secret of your strength. He said, tie my hair in wet cords. She said, tell me the secret of your strength. Tie my hair in new cords. Tell me the secret of your strength. Uh, Tie my hair in wet braids. I'll be as weak as any other man. And she said, you've lied to me. You've lied to me. Why won't you tell me the secret of your strength? And because of his weakness and his 
inability to separate the two. He said, you cut my hair, I'll be as weak as any other man. She said, that's a good boy. Lay your head back down and go to sleep. This is recorded in, in Judges chapter 17 with his head in her lap. The Bible says she, he fell asleep. She cuts his hair, snip, 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 and she screams, the Philistines are upon you, the Philistines are upon you, and he goes out and he says, I'll defeat them like I have every other time. But then the Bible says, the saddest scripture in the Bible to me, it says, but he did not know that the glory of God had departed from him. And the Bible says they gouged his eyes. And I want you to look at me. I want you, I want you to feel this for a moment. It's just a little throwaway line in the Bible, but it says they gouged his eyes out. They took an instrument, stuck it into his head, and gouged his eyes out of the socket of his head. And he lost the ability to see. And I want you to understand, when you try to mix the two worlds, you lose the ability to see what God has for you. But if we can step over into this realm, we can see every good and perfect thing that our God has for us. And we can't just do this on Sunday morning for two hours when we come in this building. We've got to learn to do this in our bedroom. We've got to do this on our job. We've got to do this in our schools. We've got to do this in our business. That say, God, all of the things that I sense when I'm in the house of God, I believe you can bring to me right Right here in this place. I want you to know my wife doesn't play the piano very good. Uh, Pastor Renee, she doesn't play near as good as you. As a matter of fact, my wife plays the piano pretty bad. But she can play one worship song and it's good enough we can worship to it. And I'll never forget we were in our living room one day around our piano and we were in a crisis of our life and what will we do for our future? And she started playing a song. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And she played that pretty bad in our living room. But the presence of God came in our living room. And we fell on our faces before God. And God began to speak things to us in our living room. And we began to write down everything God said. And everything that we would do in our future, God revealed to us in that moment in our living room, worshiping in the presence of God, far more than anything I've experienced in church, although it's always wonderful in the house of God. But we made a decision. We've got to have a crisis. And because we had been protecting and guarding what we were doing, God began to speak to us. And it lined out everything we would do for the rest of our married life. Hallelujah. Why? We got to protect it. We got to guard what we watch. We got to guard what we listen to. We got to guard what we touch. We got to guard where we go. Because bad company truly does corrupt good character. And we become what we hang out with. And so I would much rather hang out with Gary Kraft than anybody else. I love my friend. And I love being around him. He sharpens me every time I'm around him. And so we've got to pursue the pool. We've got to protect the pool. Come on, am I standing in it right now? Am I standing in it right now? Yes. Come on, help me. Am I standing in it now? No. Come on, real loud. Am I standing in it now? Yes. How did I get in here? I made a willful decision to step out of this realm and step over into this realm so that all that God could have for me could be revealed. We got to pursue the pool. We got to protect the pool. Third thing is we got to practice in the pool. We got to practice in the pool. Everybody say practice. I want to read a scripture to you, 2 Timothy. Uh, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Come on, can everybody read this one with me? Come on, read it out loud. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Keep going. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. Come on, read it out loud. But God gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Uh, King James says power, love, and a sound mind. See, I want you to understand we can practice in the pool. I told you a moment ago, it's portable. And so practice makes what? Perfect. And the more I practice anything, the better I get at that. How many ladies in here have ever put on lipstick before? Would you hold your hand up so I can see it? How many of you were the greatest woman in the history of the world? You, you, sir, you put on lipstick too? All right. Uh, we're going to pray for you in just a moment. Okay. How many ladies in here were the greatest woman in the history of the world at putting on lipstick the very first time you did it? Hold your hand up. Lie. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you might have been. I have three sisters. And I remember when they were little girls, they had that lipstick everywhere. I mean, it was everywhere. But I see you women drive now. You can drive with one hand, and you can whip that lipstick out with the other hand, and you can roll it right in the lines, even without looking. Because you've done it so many times, you can do it in the dark. Is that right? 
How many men in here played football, baseball, or basketball? Hold your hand up. How many of you were the greatest football, baseball, or basketball player in the history of the world the very first time you played? Yeah, no, but the more you do it, the better you get. See, I know I can throw a football 50 yards still to this day at 59 years of age. I can step out in the parking lot, and I can throw a football if you've got one, and I can still throw one over 50 yards. Because throwing a football, I found out a long time ago, is not about strength. It's about technique. And I learned a technique and have taught a whole bunch of boys through the years how to throw a football. And I can still do that because I've practiced it again and again and again and again and again. The more you practice anything, the better you become at that particular thing. Yes? The more we work on cars, hopefully the better we work on cars. The more we cook, hopefully, the better we cook. Uh, the more we uh, uh, position ourselves financially, the better we get with our finances. The more we practice anything, the more we worship, the better we worship. The more we pray, the better we pray. The more we share our faith, the better we share our faith. And God gives the miracle every time we do this. And I found the greatest way to practice the presence of God is to carry the pool with me everywhere I go and just begin to sing the song of the Lord. Worship brings God's presence very close. And I just begin to sing. Come on, can you close your eyes? Can you bow your heads? And can you sing this song with me? Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ the Lord, for he alone is worthy. Come on, sing it. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. Christ the Lord. And I'll give him all the glory. I'll give you all the glory. Come on, lift it loud. Lift your voice. I'll give you all the glory. I'll give you all the glory Christ the Lord now look at me would you how many of you when we begin to sing a song like that you just begin to sense the presence of God hold your hand up so I can see it come on hold it up real high so everybody can see it hold, all the way up come on hold it up high so everybody can look around this room why would all of us sense something why would all of us feel something listen to me there's a natural realm in this body that we live in but there's a spirit realm that I can step over into at any time and I can have what I felt just a moment ago that God comes close to me and I come close to God I've got to learn to carry this this pool with me I've got to pursue this pool I've got to protect this pool but I've got to practice in this pool and I can throw it down wherever I am and step in this realm. Am I standing in it now? Am I standing in it now? Come on, help me. Am I standing in it now? How did I get in here? I made a willful decision to say, I want this realm. And I'm just going to tell you, you're going to have to fight your, your natural flesh because work and family and life and friends and Facebook and cell phones and internet and everything else is fighting for our attention. And God's saying, come away with me. You can find me when you seek me, when you seek me with all of your heart. Hallelujah. I remember when I was a little boy, my daddy told me, he said, he said, boys don't play football in the house. And how many know sometimes boys do things they're not supposed to do when they're 10 years old? Well, I was 10 years old and I loved to throw the football. And my little brother was six years old. My dad was outside cutting the grass. And I heard the lawnmower running, so I saw the football over on the couch, and I reached over and grabbed it, and I threw the football real hard across the room. And it went right through my six-year-old brother's hands, hit my dad's favorite lamp, and knocked it over, and just destroyed it. And I knew I was in big trouble, because he had gotten this from four generations earlier. So I was in trouble. It was an antique lamp. I was in big, big trouble. So I told my brother, I said, quick, Scotty, go lock the door. My dad was outside cutting the grass. 
And so he locked the door and we started picking up the glass. And a few minutes later, my dad, we heard the lawnmower cut off and my dad came to the front door and tried to come in. And he said, open the door, boys. And I said, daddy, I, I can't open this door. He said, open the door, boys. And I, I, I knew I was in big trouble. And I said, I cannot open this door, dad. And he said, whatever you've done is going to be twice as bad if you don't open this door right now. Anybody else ever heard that voice before? And my dad, I opened the door and I let my daddy in. And he came in and saw his favorite lamp just destroyed on the floor and the football sitting in the middle of all the glass. And he knew what had happened. He pulled his belt off and he beat the tar out of me that day. You know why my daddy whipped me that day? Because I opened the door. If I'd have kept that door locked, he'd still be outside. Come on, somebody. I opened the door and I let him in. You know why some of you are losing? Because you're opening the door. And you want everything that God has for you and God wants to give it to you. But he's saying you've opened the door and you've let the enemy in. He's saying, come away with me. Come away with me. Stay with your pastors. Stay in the house. And I'll guard you and I'll protect you. I want you to have my glory. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm asking that you would begin to speak to every heart in this room. And no matter who's in this room, no matter what situations of life that they're going through, I pray that you would begin to touch their heart and you would begin to draw them to you right now. In the name of Jesus, every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around for just a moment. You can put your hands down for just a moment now. I want to ask you a question because this is a really really important question. Everybody's going to have to answer this question whether you think you will or not. If you died today, do you know that you know that you know that you'd be in heaven with Jesus? It's a really important question. And whether we think we'll have to answer this question or not, we will have to answer this question. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and after that to face the judgment. So we're all going to have to answer that question. And, and, and maybe you're like, I, 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 don't, I don't know the answer to that. Ask yourself, God, if today was my last day on this planet, if I was tragically something happened, do I know that I know that I know that I'd be in heaven with Jesus? See, you can fool me today because I'm pretty easy to fool. You can fool your friends. You can fool your neighbors. You can fool your pastors. You can fool your, your coworkers. You can even fool the police. But I can tell you this, you'll never fool God. He loves you. He created you. He made you. And he says, I'm calling you close to me. He's saying, pursue me, protect me, and practice with me. And look at all I can do with you. So with every head bowed, ask yourself, God, if this was me, ask yourself, are you talking to me, God? You're the only person I'm talking to right now. You're the only person I'm talking to. I need Christians to pray right now. Somebody's life is in the balance. You may never get another chance to ever hear this this, uh, again. The Bible promises a lot. It just does not promise tomorrow. So if you're here, young lady, young man, mom or dad, guest here, you're watching online somewhere, ask yourself, God, what if if it was a a horrible uh, automobile accident right after the service and you were tragically killed? Do you know that you know that you'd be in heaven with Jesus? What if it was a tornado that came to this region that's happening more and more in Alabama? And you were tragically killed. Do you know that you know that you'd be in heaven with Jesus? What if it was a a, a horrible situation, a drive-by shooting that's happening more and more in our culture and you were tragically killed? Do you know that you know that you'd be in heaven with Jesus? See, you can fool me today. You can fool everybody else, but you can't fool God. If there's an inkling in your heart that things are not right with you and God, I would not leave this building today without getting things right with God because you may never have another chance to hear this. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, young lady, young man, mom or dad, guest here today, ask yourself, God, are you talking to me? And I'm not asking you to join this church. This is a wonderful church. I'm asking you to join the kingdom of God. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, pray, Christians. If you're here, sir, if you're here, ma'am, young lady, young man, if that's you and you say, I'm just not sure. There are some things in my life that I'm just not sure about. I can fool everybody else, but I can't fool God. I want to get closer to God today. Would you pray for me, Brother Johnny? Pray for me. If that's you anywhere in this room, when I count to three and you say, I need to get closer to God today, include me in that final prayer. When I count to three, if that's you anywhere, no matter who's on your right and left, no matter who's in front of you and behind you, this is not between you and anybody else. I'm telling you, the demons are screaming right now. Don't listen to that preacher. Don't listen to that preacher, but you may never have another chance. I beg of you. I beg of you. This is not some religious manipulation. This is not some religious thing that we do, but there's an urgency 
of the call of God that's saying, come close to me. Come close to me. And what you're looking for, I can show you. Come close to me. Come close to me. And what you need, I can give you. So if that's you anywhere in this room, no matter who's in front of you and behind you, no matter who's on your right and left, if you say, that's me, uh, there are things in my life that are wrong. And I know I need to get closer to Jesus today. Include me in that final prayer. If that's you, when I count to three, no matter who's around you, in the balcony or on the floor, if you say, it's me, pray for me, Pastor. I need to get closer to Jesus today. I want to get in the pool. Pray for me today. If that's you anywhere in this room, when I count to three, raise your hand right now. Shove it in the devil's throat. Here we go. One, two, three. That's me. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Yes, amen. Yes, I see you, ma'am. I see you, young man. I see you, man. You can put your hands down. Come on, church. Pray right now. I'm going to ask one more time. Maybe there's somebody else in this room. And you say, I don't want to go to hell, Brother Johnny. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to play games with my future. I want to stay in the pool. I want to stay in the pool. I want to stay in the presence of God. I want to live in that realm. Please pray for me. I should have raised my hand, but I was afraid of what someone might think. If you didn't raise your hand a moment ago, but you know you should have, when I count to three, raise your hand right now. Shove it down the devil's throat. Here we go. One, two, three. Raise it now. Anybody else? Raise it now. Raise it now. Anybody else? Get my attention. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Father, I've, to- I've done everything you told me to do. Now, Lord, give the increase and help me decrease. We pray in Jesus' name. Would everybody stand with me, please, for just a moment? Hallelujah. Nobody leaving, please, for just a moment. Pastor will come and he'll close the service for us in just a minute. Hallelujah. Look at me. Those of you that raise your hands, I know who you are. You know who you are. God knows who you are and the devil knows who you are. The first step is always to raise our hand to acknowledge him. The second step is to publicly acknowledge God. Jesus said this, and the word of God teaches, if you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. Look at me. I want you to hear this. 43 years ago, I was an alcoholic going the wrong way with the wrong group of people. I was in and out of trouble with the law. My family was falling apart, and my life was a mess. And my best friend told me, just get drunk enough, and you can take care of that. And I believed that lie, unfortunately, and alcohol was destroying me. But a beautiful girl invited me to go to church, and I have to be honest, the only reason I went was because she was so pretty. And I went and sat with church, and I sat on the very back row of the church. And I was passing notes to her the whole service until all of a sudden the minister said, if you don't know Jesus, you're going to go to hell. This is not a game. Do you hear me, church? This is a reality. and And I'd heard that before, but it didn't really make a lot of sense. But then he said this, God loves you, and God wants to help you. I'd never heard that before. All I heard was God was mad at me. God was going to judge me. But if God loves me and God wants to help me, I want that. And I got from the back row of that Baptist church. It was about 120 feet back. And I got out from the back row and I walked all the way to the front. And nobody was laughing at me. They gave me a standing ovation. And I I heard some of them saying, there goes Johnny, there goes Johnny. They knew what a dysfunction my life was and what a mess I was. Can I tell you, nobody in this room is going to laugh at you. We're going to give you a standing ovation. Is that right, church? Because we know what God can do in your life in this moment, that if you ever touch him, like an alcoholic has to have a drink or a drug addict has to have a drug, if you ever taste the power of God, you'll never be satisfied with just religion. You have to have him. So those of you that raise your hands, I'm going to ask you to take the second step with me. Every person that raised their hand, or if you didn't and you should have, I'm going to ask you in just a moment to step out of your seat and come stand right in this altar with me. Get a friend to come with you. As a matter of fact, everybody in this room, would you just turn and look at someone next to you and say, hey, if you need to go get closer to Jesus, I'll go up there with you. Would you just turn and ask them right now? That question could change somebody's future. It could change somebody's future. Now, if you would, every person to raise their hand when I count to three. If you're in the balcony, if you're down here, when I count to three, you come right now. And we're going to give you a standing ovation. Don't let anything stop you. Shove it down the devil's throat. Here we go. One, two, three. Every person to raise their hand. You come. Can we clap for them, church? Come on, right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. You come on. You come on. Come on. Every person to raise their hand. You come. Every person to raise their hand. You come. Come on, real close. Come in real close. Come in real close. Come on, every person to raise their hand. Can you clap until they all get here? Come on. Can you clap until they all get here? Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 
If you have a family member or a friend up here, would you come stand with them? Would you just come stand with them real quick? If you have a family member or a friend, would you come stand with them? Hallelujah. Look at me if you would. And these must be close to you. Let me tell you something, son. How old are you? Yeah. I waited till I was 16 to get radical for Jesus. I regret I lost two years. And today God's calling you that maybe today the presence of God is going to come over you in such measure that he says, I'm going to show you that you can carry this with you everywhere you go. Hallelujah. Not, not this one, but his. Hallelujah. That everything. How old are you, son? Ten years old. I wish I'd given my life to Jesus when I was ten. I wasted six years of my life. And God's saying today, don't be halfway. Go all the way. Look at me, sweetheart. The tears are to heal you today. That every hurt of your past, God says, I can wash it all away. And you can start all over as though you're brand new. And look at me. You know what God says? I can see it like it never happened. I can see it like it never happened. Woman of God, that all of the miracles of the power of God are available to you. And he says, carry my presence with you. I've been fighting for you since I saw you in the parking lot. But let me tell you something, young lady. God's calling you to be a leader. You know it. He's calling you to be a leader. And leaders lead but it's going to take you sacrificing time away in his presence to be everything that he wants you to be. And maybe today God is separating you and saying, this is for you now. Never be ashamed of the name of Jesus. Never be ashamed of the name of Jesus. Your life's not behind you. It's in front of you. And all the things that have hurt behind you and the people who made promises that they did not keep, God will never break his promise. He'll never break his promise to you. Amen. Would everybody stretch your hands toward these so nobody be embarrassed, so nobody pray this out loud, so nobody be embarrassed. I don't know if we're online, but if you're watching online somewhere, would you pray this right now with us? And would everyone pray this out loud? Everyone pray it with me. Dear Lord Jesus, come on, everybody pray it loud. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I know it was my sins that nailed you on that cross and I'm sorry Lord please forgive me I know I'm a sinner and I need a savior so I say with my mouth that Jesus is the Christ and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead I give you my past all of my mistakes all of my hurt all of my pain all of my sin I give you my future everything I will ever become and I start over today a child of God and I receive you now as my only Lord as my only hope as my only way to heaven you died for me Jesus help me live for you now for the rest of my life I want to stay in the pool I want to stay in the pool. Come on, say it. I want to stay in the pool. Help me today, oh God. In Jesus' name. Now stretch your hands toward these in the altar. Come on, everybody. Pray for them right now. And pray every demon, every stronghold, every word curse, every soul tie, every generational curse, every genetic curse is broken. Satan, they are the property of Jesus Christ. Today, as they pray this prayer, we believe the old is passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's a new day. It's a new beginning. It's a new opportunity that they're going to walk with you in the fullness of all that you are and all that you want to be with them in the days ahead. So we ask you, break every power of hell that tries to hinder them, but cover them. (coughs) Cover them with your great grace today. We pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can you give these that came forward a standing ovation, church? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I walked out of a moment just like this, 43 years ago, long before you were ever born. And I, and I walked out, and I haven't had a drink of alcohol in my mouth since that night. And you know what I did? I started practicing in the pool. You know what I did? The pastor told me, he said, he said boy, you got saved. He called me boy. He didn't call me by my name. He said, boy, you got saved. He said, on your way home, tell somebody about Jesus. I, I didn't know how you did that. But I couldn't believe the pastor told me to go tell somebody about the God that I had just received. So I went to a 7-Eleven because they had ICs. Anybody like ICs? 
And they had banana flavor ices. And I always walked in that, that 7-Eleven. And the lady that worked there kind of looked like you. And I'd seen her there many times, but I'd never talked to her. So I walked in and I said, well, I'm going to do what that pastor told me. I'm going to tell her what God just did in my life. And I'd only been saved for 30 minutes. And, and so I didn't really know a whole lot about it. I just knew the pastor told me to do it. And, and so I walked in and I was nervous. Anybody know what I'm saying? I wanted her to know that God had moved in my heart, but I was really nervous about this. I didn't know why I got nervous, but I did. And, and, and I walked up to her and I said, could I have an icy? And I was shaking and she said, man, you want one bad, don't you? And I just blew it and I started to walk out. And, 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 and when I got to the door, the spirit of God stopped me and said, this is for you. He stopped me. He said, go back and tell her right now you're not getting drunk anymore. Go back and tell her you're not what you were when you walked into the church a couple hours ago. Go back and tell her you're different. And I turned around. I got all my faith and boldness up again. And I walked over to the counter. I said, and I was still nervous. I said, could I ask you a question? And she said, yes. I said, do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? And she said, well, yes, I sure do. And I was like, thank God. All right, because I didn't know what you did after that. All right. I just did what the preacher told me to do. And I almost floated out of that 7-Eleven because it felt so good to tell her what God had done. The next night, that pastor called me. I still don't know how he got my phone number. He called me. He said, boy, you got saved last night. He said, I'm going to tell people about Jesus. You want to go with me? And I said, I want to go with you. So I went, he said, meet me at the church at 6 o'clock. I got there at 5.30. I just couldn't wait for this. And he came at 6 o'clock. We prayed. We went right across the street uh, to uh, the neighborhood, right across the street from the church. And it was a real big guy, about, about as big as that guy up there in the balcony. Everybody look, that's a giant up there. All right. And he was about 6'6", six, six, about broad shoulders. And, and, and he opened the door. He said, what do you want? And the pastor said, hey, I'm Dan Springfield. This is Johnny Jernigan. And we want to tell you about Jesus and what Jesus can do in your life. He said, you get the blankety-blank off my front porch. I don't want your blankety-blank material. And don't you ever blankety-blank ever come to my house again. And, and he used every curse word known to man in about 30 seconds. And that was my introduction to Christianity. And the pastor said, Johnny, that was tough, man. He said, you want to just go back to the church and pray? Or you want to go to the next house? And all I can tell you is, I didn't want to be what I was before. I knew God moved in my heart. I said, let's go to the next house. We went to the next house. We knocked on the door. And a lady about this tall and about as big around as she was tall, she opened the door and she said, yes. He said, hey, I'm Dan Springfield. This is Johnny Jernigan. We want to tell you about Jesus and what Jesus can do in your life. And she said, come on in. And she had just made some fresh chocolate chip cookies. They were about that thick. They had massive chocolate chips in them that when they melted, they ran all through that cookie. And then she brought us a glass out with frost on it that she kept in the freezer and gave us some cold iced tea and a chocolate chip. I mean, it was about that thick, had massive chocolate chips in it that when it melted, it ran all through that cookie. Who wants one right now? Come on, hallelujah. And she gave us a cookie and she gave us a glass of tea and the pastor began to talk to her about Jesus. And then he shocked me. He looked at me and he said, tell her what God did in your, in your heart last night, boy. And I, I, I didn't know how to do that. I'd only been saved for 24 hours. So I was like, I'm not getting drunk anymore. I gave my life to Jesus. That's all I knew how to say. And he said, isn't that so good, this young man's out here? And he said, would you like to know Jesus? She said, I want to know Jesus the way you've talked about him tonight. She was a Catholic. She knew about Catholicism. She just didn't know Jesus. And does anybody remember Woody Woodpecker? I'll never forget it. She, she, she jumped up off her couch after she prayed to receive Jesus and started laughing like Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> just bouncing all around her living room. Listen to me. She died five years ago, and I did her funeral. I was there the day she got saved, and I was the, there the day she went to her eternal reward. Within 24 hours of giving my life to Christ, I saw the gospel work twice. And I'm just telling you, you're not just joining a church. You're not just joining a movement. You're not just joining an organization. You're stepping over into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we carry that with us? Lift your hands to God. Come on, lift your hands to God all over this room. If you need a miracle, pastor prayed at the beginning of this service. He said, God can heal anything. God can deliver anything. And the pool is in this room. You can step over into the pool if you're willing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We believe for your anointing that breaks every yoke of the devil. We believe for your anointing that pushes every power of the enemy away. And there were some people 
people that got healed a while ago, Pastor Gary was feeling it, that something you said, I'm not going to go ask for prayer again. I'm not going to go ask for prayer again. But God was touching that need for you. God was ministering to you. So come on, lift your hands. Whatever you need God to do for you. And there's not one of us in this room, whether it's your marriage or your children or your finances or your health or your business or your school or your heart or the crisis of your emotions or mental health issues, whatever it is that you are fighting through. Come on, lift your hands and say, God, I believe in the pool is everything that I need. Come on, step over in there. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. By his stripes, you were healed. By his stripes, you are healed. The prayer of faith heals the sick. He has said, I am the God that heals you. I am the God who heals you. So in Jesus' name, lift both hands down and say, God, I receive your healing. I receive your healing. I receive your help. I receive your strength. I receive your assistance. In the name of the Lord. 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 You can put your hands down. If there's a sickness over you, hold your hand up. Sickness. Hold your hand up anywhere in this room. Hold your hand up. If there's sickness of any kind, hold your hand up. Hold it up. Hold it up right now. If somebody's around you, close enough to you, reach over and touch them on the shoulder. Just reach over and touch them on the shoulder and agree with them right now that the God of miracles and Brother Mustache, my brother right there, would you reach over and and pray for her? Mm -hmm. I want us to agree right now. Come on, look around you right now. If somebody has their hand raised, pray for them right now. Father, in Jesus' name, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, you said they are healed. That Lord, you said your blood was spilled for their healing. So be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray for them right now that the healing miracle of God is revealed right now in this room. We're standing in the pool. We're standing in the pool. Believe for the anointing of God to come and touch them right now. Be healed, be healed, be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Look at me, sweetheart. What are you believing for to be healed right now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, You're, what are you believing for right now? How old, are you? How old are you? No, it's okay. It's okay. 15. God just said, tell her, whatever you believe for, he said, tell her I can do it. Whatever you believe for, believe big. Stretch your hands to water church. Come on. Believe big. Believe big. Then he stops this everything and he says, tell her, believe big. Whatever you can believe for, God is big enough to do it. At church, come on. It's not just for her. It's for everybody in this room. Believe. Whatever you can believe for, God can do it. He said, ask and it'll be given. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open. So believe big, sweetheart. Believe big, sweetheart. God can do this with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands down. How many of you need a miracle in some other aspect of your life that's not physical healing, but you need a miracle somewhere else? Hold your hand up. It may be financial. Maybe It may be a relational. Maybe business. You need a miracle. Come on, my wife and I, we're believing for a miracle. I texted her right before I came to the pulpit today, and I'm believing for something for my wife and for me right now. So I'm raising my hand. Come on, church. We're, I believe we're standing in the pool. God is a God of miracles. If you need, if you need a miracle, any area, hold your hand up. Now look around you. If somebody has their hand raised, move to them real quick. Keep your hand raised. Somebody move to these. Would you go pray for my brother right there by, right there in Jesus' name? Would you reach over and pray for my brother right there? Lord, we believe for all of these in this room that, Lord, every need that is in their life, you're the God of supernatural. You're the God of miracles. You're the God who can push the demons back. You're the God who can provide. Lord, you can make the desert a uh, place. You can g- give a river in the desert. God, you can split the oceans and we can walk across on dry ground. God, you can make provision. You can make supernatural things turn around. That what looks impossible is not impossible with you in Jesus' name. Now, every person that raised their hand, lift both hands right now and say, I believe my God can do this. I believe my God can do this. Come on, say it out loud. Let the devil hear you. I believe my God can do this. I believe my God can do this. I believe my God can do this. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. In the na- Can all of the musicians come back real quick? And we're going to close with that song again, that cancers are falling, what we were singing a while ago. And we're going to just declare that over the house one more time. Look at me. Look at me. Am I standing in the pool right now? Am I standing in it now? Come on, indulge me. Am I standing in it now? Come on, am I standing in it now? How did I get in here? I made a choice. I'm asking you to take the pool home with you today. 
I'm asking you wherever you go, take the pool home with you today and say, Pastor, I'm believing for revival. Look at me. Come up, uh, Pastor, would you come up here with me? I don't know many pastors that did what he did at the beginning of this service. And let me tell you, it takes real courage and it takes real intestinal fortitude to be able to take time out of the service to get you out of your seats and get you to come and pray and do that. And let me tell you, your pastor's heard from God. Do you believe that? Oh, that was so pukey. I said, your pastor has heard from God. Do you believe that? And I want you to stretch your hands toward him. The Lord told me on Friday night, your altar calls are about to go to a whole new level. And when you give altar calls, the worst of sinners in Gunnersville are going to get saved in this church. The most broken people in Gunnersville are going to be put back together in this church. The most impossible situations that the news is going to talk about it. Governmental leaders are going to talk about it, Pastor Gary. There's a revival spirit that is stirring in this house. And the enemy's even tried to make you afraid recently because you said, I don't know what to do with it. But man of God, you're going to have supernatural wisdom wisdom. You're going to have supernatural ideas and your altar calls are about to go to a whole new level that people are about to get saved and healed and delivered and baptized in the Holy Ghost. What what uh, doctors can't do, what Jesus can do. Psychologists cannot heal what Jesus can heal. And people that are bound by drugs, people that are bound by addictions, people that are bound by mental illnesses, can the power of God heal them? Come on, can the power of God heal them? So stretch your hands towards your pastor and believe that this is an anointing, that God's going to give your pastor wisdom. God's going to give your pastor ideas. God's going to give your pastor words of wisdom and words of knowledge. And pastor, in the name that's above every name, your altar calls are about to go to a whole new level. And you're going to see the things you've hungered for your whole life. All your whole life, you said, God, I'm getting older, and I didn't ever think my ministry would ever see these things. But you're about to see it, Pastor Gary. You're about to see it, Pastor Gary, and God's going to do it. Anybody stretch your hands toward Pastor Renee. Pastor Renee, let me tell you something, woman of God. There are things he will see, but there are going to be things you're going to see that he won't see. And that's why God has yoked the two of you together. That the Lord has given you an anointing to see things in the realm of the Spirit. And you're going to take this pool with you in a whole new dimension, Pastor Renee. And you're going to see things with God. And you're going to hear things with God. And you're going to come and declare the things of God. And people are going to be healed. The Lord said people are going to start getting healed during worship. People are going to start getting delivered during worship. And then the pastor's going to come and preach and miracles are going to come of salvation and healing and deliverance. But it's going to be because you're going to see things, Pastor Renee. You're going to see things. Stretch your hands toward Pastor Renee. Come on. Father, thank you for this precious woman of God who sees things, who sees things. And God, give her that seer's anointing, that prophet's anointing, a prophet, prophetess that will see the things of the Lord in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Now come on, lift your hands and say, I want to stay in the pool. Can you say that with me? I want to stay in the pool. Come on, say it. I want to stay in the pool. Can we sing that again? I see the cancers falling. Come on, shout it loud. Can we declare this to the Lord? Hallelujah. Fear has seemed broken. Fear has seemed bones made whole. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he on, can't church, do it. I see real life resurrection. I see mental health restored. Don't you tell me on, he can't do house. it. Don't shout you it tell me house. he Bring can't God. do it. I've seen families reunited. I've seen prodigals return. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen troubled souls delivered. I've seen addicts finally free. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen broken bones made whole. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen real life resurrection. I see mental health restored. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I see families reunited. I 
I've seen prodigals return. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen troubled souls delivered. I've seen addicts finally free. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he will see cities. We'll see cities in revival and salvation flood the streets. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me we'll see your glory. We'll see glory fill the nations like the world has never seen. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Cause I know that he can. I believe the wonder working God. You're the wonder working God. All the miracles I seen. Too good to not believe. You're the wonder working God. You heal because you love. All the miracles we'll see. Too good. Can I get that guy right there with the beard? Uh -huh. Yeah, can you come up here? Is that your wife with you? Can you come, sister wife? Hallelujah. I don't know names, so I just have to call. Hallelujah. Yeah, what's wrong with your knees? I three surgeries. Yeah. Two lives. Awesome. Come on up here, sister wife. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you're in the house of God. But while we were worshiping, when you lifted your hands, the Lord said, my glory is coming over him. My glory is coming over him. And he's the God who heals. What doctors can't do, Jesus can. What's your name? Stretch your hands toward Chris, church. Come on. Pastor, would you come and lay your hands on him? Father, in the name that's above every name, we believe that Chris is healed. That strength. God, do what no doctor can do. Do what no doctor can do. Touch him. Heal him. Strengthen him. Restore him. Renew him. Shop the doctors. Shop the doctors. And let him see the miracle of God. And God's coming to your family. God's coming to your family. Family members are about to get saved. Don't you give up on them. Don't you give up on them. Lift your hands to God right now. And say, I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. Come on, say it, woman of God. I believe I'm healed. And call your family in right now. Call your family in right now. Whoever their names are, call them out. Call them out. Father, we believe in Jesus' name that not only are you doing a miracle for my brother, Chris, you're touching his family. You're bringing his family to the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Look at me, church. This thing is winding down. Jesus is about to return. How many of you got family members that are not saved? Hold your hand up. It could be too late soon. It'll be too late soon, like it was in the days of Noah. They'll say, open the door, Noah. Open the door, Noah. And it'll be too late. We've got to reach them now. We've got to reach them now. If you have family members that are not saved, hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. Call their names out. It could be too late. We cannot believe that the devil will hold them anymore. We've got to go and get them and bring them. Father, just like you said, bring this couple on the platform. Do it for everybody in this church. That their family's going to get saved. Their family's going to get saved. Their family's going to get saved. And they're going to go and tell them, it's not going to be too late. God, don't let them wander away. Let us go and get them. Let us go and get them and bring them to Jesus. Let us go and get them and bring them to Jesus. Call their names out right now. Call their names out right now. Whoever that family member is. And believe God for their salvation. God, we believe it. We don't want the enemy to steal them. We don't want them to knock on the door and it'll be too late. Draw them in, God. Draw them in, God. Draw them in, God. That sweet lady sitting back there with a the hat on. Can you stand up, sweetheart? Are you able to stand? Let me tell you something. The Lord stopped me right there and he said, tell her I know her name. I'm holding her in the palm of my hand. And sometimes you haven't felt it. Like, God, where were you? But he said, tell her she's never gone anywhere that I didn't hold her. And I'm holding her in my hand. And you should be dead. There's some things that could have taken your life. But God has protected you so that you would be where you are today. And God's saying, I'm going to use her to do the work of an evangelist. I'm going to use her to do the work of an evangelist. And no matter where you've been or done or whatever's happened before, this is January the 22nd, I believe, 2023. And the Lord said, what's your name? Taylor. Everybody say Taylor. Taylor, lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, just as a surrender to him. He said, today I want to make you an evangelist. 
I want you to go and gather them. I want you to go and gather them. I want you to go and gather them. And you know how to influence other people. And you've done it certain ways in your past, but God's going to influence people in these days. And they're going to know Jesus through you, Taylor. Go and get them. Chris, you're going to do the work of an evangelist. And the Lord, when you lifted your hand back there, he said, I'm going I'm to use the Chris to do the work of an evangelist. And I'm going to win souls. I'm going to win souls. I'm going to win souls. Get ready, man of God. Get ready, man of God. Believe God can do it. Go home and believe for God to touch your family. Come on, lift your hands all over this room. And say, God, I want my family saved. I want my family saved. It's, it, God, it's almost too late. It's almost too late. I don't want them to go to hell. I want them to know the truth. And I'm going to go and get them, and I'm going to bring them to the house of God. I'm going to go and get them, and I'm going to bring them to the house of God. You know this is you. You know this is you. Hold your hand up. You know God's called you to win souls. You know God's called you to win souls. And as a teller, my anointing is coming over her right now so that she will go and win souls. Go, woman of God. Go, woman of God, and gather them. This is your time. Stay with your pastor and watch what God is about to do in Jesus' name. Stretch your hands toward this young girl right here. The presence of God is moving on you, and he's saying, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. God is bigger than any enemy that comes against you, sweetheart. God is bigger than any issue around you. Do you believe it? Lift your hands to God. Come on. God, touch Heal, deliver, strengthen, and do your work, we pray in Jesus' name. You're an, you're an evangelist. He said, go and win them. I am a pure evangelist. I am a soul winner. So, Father, what you've given to me, give it to her. Let her go and win souls. Go, woman of God. Go, woman of God. Hallelujah. 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 Your life's, I want you to know, man of God, you've had a lot of people say a lot of things about you. You've had a lot of people abuse you in your past. And I want you to know something. God says, I've kept you all this time that you would be in the house of God. You would hear this, that you've been looking here and looking here and looking here and looking here to try to find what you want. But God said, if you'll stay with this man right here, that God's about to show you, the veil's about to open, and you're going to say, that's what my whole life I've been looking for. And God's going to use you, man of God. If I was as big as you, I'd beat him in the kingdom. So you go do what God's called you to do. What is your name? Montana. Stretch your hands toward Montana. Brother Big Man, you go lay your hands on him. Brother, would you come lay your hands on him? Father, I thank you for Montana. Do a new work in Montana, God. Turn the switch on, God. Awaken Montana today, God. That Montana's going to do everything you've called him to do. He's going to fulfill everything you've told him to fulfill. And this is his time. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That tall lady right there, when you came up for prayer earlier, believe that God can win souls through you. Believe today. And what Pastor was praying for a while ago at the beginning of the service, I believe the Lord gave you today. So we believe in Jesus' name. By His stripes, you've received this today in Jesus' name. Not by might nor by power, but by His Spirit. What is your name? Alita? Alisa. Stretch your hands toward Elisa. Can you pray for her right now? Father, we pray for Elisa that everything you're unleashing in her life, she is going to fulfill. Everything you're unleashing in her life, and Elisa, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. And the Lord is going to use you to do these things. The Lord is going to use you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That girl in the balcony up there, God hasn't forgotten you. God hasn't forgotten you. Lift your hands to the Lord. And he's, you too, sweetheart. Come on, just lift your hands. There you go. Don't you love children? And God says, I have so much more for you. And you're like, Lord, you've been so good to me my whole life. And he has. But he said, tell her, I've got more. I've got more. I've got more. And I see you spinning like a top, just dancing before the Lord. And he said, tell her that people are going to see her worship and they're going to be drawn to the glory of God. And people who don't know God are going to find God through you. So keep worshiping, woman of God. Keep worshiping, precious girl. And watch, watch what God's going to do. Stretch your hands toward them. Come on, can you believe? Father, in the name that's above every name, would your anointing touch these girls? Anoint them, empower them, strengthen them, and use them, oh God, for all that you have for them. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I have my pull back? I'm asking you, take this with you, church. Do you sense his presence? He's here. He was here when you walked in. He'll be here when you're gone. But he's going with you. Stay in the pool. Stay in the pool. Come on. Stay 
in the pool. Hallelujah. Can I let you hug somebody and go back to your seat for just a minute? Hug somebody and say, we're going to stay in the pool. 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 Keep believing, woman of God. Keep believing, woman of God. Hallelujah. 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 Do you know who Gloria Copeland is? When you walk by me, the Lord said, I'm going to teach through that woman like I do with Gloria Copeland. And you're going to teach, woman of God, and other people are going to hear the word of the Lord through you. Hold your hand up. Stretch your hands toward that sweet lady, sister blonde hair. Father, in Jesus' name, anoint her. Thank you for your servant, Gloria Copeland, and all you've taught through her through many years. Now, God, teach through this woman. Teach through open doors, open avenues, and let her teach in the house of the Lord, and let her draw people to the house of God. In Jesus' name, go and teach. You stay with your pastors, and you watch what God's about to do in Jesus' name. Amen, Brother Mustache. God can do it. God can do it. God can do it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to help me with something real quick, and Pastor will come. The next service starts in five minutes. Is that okay? We'll just start again. I'm going to ask you to help me with something. Um, I, I travel every week as an evangelist, and, and we do what we've done here every week. And we come and we take churches out into the community and we invite people to come. And how many of you were here yesterday? Hold your hand up so I can see you. Awesome. Was it awesome? As we got to pray with so many people all over this community. And uh, next week I will be in Chattanooga. And then the week after that I'll be in, uh, back in Dallas. And then the week after that I'll be in Jacksonville, Florida. And so every week we're in different cities trying to take our churches out. I work with all of the churches in Alabama, and, um, and, and last year, we closed 17 churches in the state of Alabama last year. And I want you to hear that again. We closed 17 churches. How many know we don't need to close any more churches? We need every church vibrant, every church alive. And some of these have fallen apart for a lot of different reasons. And, and, and I've asked our, our district leader, Brother Drawn, I've asked him, please don't close any more churches until you give us a chance as evangelists to go in there and resurrect them. So he said, all right, go do it. Now, and so we, we have to raise the funds to go beside some of these churches and work with them. Some of these churches are down to three people, four people, seven people. And we're working with them because McDonald's has proven if you build more McDonald's, you sell more hamburgers. If we have more vibrant churches, we're going to win more people to Jesus. And so we want to win people to Christ. And how many believe I'm an evangelist? I am a pure evangelist. And I, I ache to see people come to faith in Christ. Just like these, that, that girl right there. You just don't even know what you're capable of. And all that God's going to do in the days ahead. And so I ache for this. This is something that I, I, I go to bed every night thinking, how can we win souls? I wake up every morning thinking, how can we win souls? It's, it never leaves me. And so the only way we can go to these churches is just like the Apostle Paul. Uh, he had to have the churches who would help him. We have to depend on the church to help us. And it takes us about $3,000 a week just to keep doing what we're doing. And that's a lot of money. Uh, and in context, it's not a lot of money because we work with those churches for six months. So it's about $500 a month that we have to send speakers in there. We have to pay for gasoline. We have to buy meals. We have to print resources. It how many of you know you can't do ministry without money? And how many of you know Billy Graham didn't do his great crusades for free? Somebody had to help him rent stadiums and rent chairs and advertise and print materials. And so I'm asking for your help today. I am not lazy. I work very, very hard. I got here on Friday and I've been working since I got in this city. Because this week I am Gunnersville Lake City Assembly of God. I am your staff evangelist. As a matter of fact, all in favor of me being your staff evangelist, say A. All opposed, no, and it carried. You see that? Hallelujah. So I am now the staff evangelist of, of Lake City Assembly of God in Gunnersville. You just voted me in. Every week I work to help these churches go out into their communities. And there's not a lot of evangelists who do this. And so this is my aching passion. Maybe there's somebody here that could give $3,000 to help these churches today. Maybe there's three people that could give $1,000. Maybe there's... 30 people that could give $100 or 60 people who could give $50. Whatever the Lord would tell you. Maybe somebody can give even far more. That only helps one church. And I have 18 churches I'm trying to help right now. I mean, you know, that's a lot of money. 
And so we, we're begging the Lord for the resources and we'll go do the, the work. I have several young evangelists that I'm training right now. And we're going to send these young evangelists in there doing what I do. And they're going to go work for these churches. Amen. Uh, would everybody get your wallet out or your checkbook out or your neighbor's wallet or your neighbor's checkbook and just give like you always wanted to. Hallelujah. Would you bow your heads? And you just stop playing the drums for just a minute. Yeah, just a minute. Every head bow, you just keep playing those keyboards for me. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're doing something marvelous in this church. I thank you. I sense revival fire burning in this church. God, I thank you for my wonderful friend, Pastor Gary, and what you're showing him. Lord, these churches are on the verge of closing, and we don't want to close them. Help us, Lord, to go and resurrect these churches in Jesus' name. Would you just bow your head and just say, Lord, what's my part? What can I give? Maybe your business has been blessed and you can adopt one of these churches or more, or more than one church. Maybe you as an individual have been blessed and, and you can give to help, help one of these churches. Or maybe you just say, I, I don't have anything to give. Well, you can pray. You can certainly pray. And your prayer is just as valuable. So pray right now. Lord, what's my part? What can I give in this? And how can we save these churches in Jesus' name? Now, Father, you help your people give what you told them to give. And, Lord, help us to win souls before it's too late to go and get them in Jesus' name. Everybody look at me. Everybody smile big and say, I love the little preacher. I think he's a sweet little man. Chris, you didn't say it, all right? You're going to have to say it outside personally in just a minute. I love you, Pastor Gary. I'm believing with you. Hallelujah. Remember to get these. They're free. As long as they last out there, please pick one up. All the words of Jesus, okay, all of his teachings. That's going to be a good little tool for, for all of us. Let me say two things. Number one, if you came and gave your heart to Christ this morning, we have some information, some uh, booklet that will help you begin your new life in Christ because he has made all things new. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so please come back. Uh, we've got some stuff in that little basket right there. We have people that want to encourage you, give you a few pointers on how to begin to move forward with your relationship with Christ. The other thing is, boy, I'm really ringing here. The other thing is this. If you want to give to Brother Johnny Jernigan's efforts to revitalize churches around this state, you can write your check to Lake City Assembly, put for Johnny Jernigan, and every dime of that will go to him, okay? You can put it in an envelope and put it in the box in the middle of this foyer, or you can go to uh, your phone and text uh, the amount you want to give to 834, what is it, 84321, 84321, and that will bring up our account. There should be a category in there for speaker, and we'll go back through and, and look for it, and we'll make sure that that goes to his ministry, okay? Did you appreciate our brother's ministry this morning? Would you give him a hand? <laughs> Evidently, you appreciated what God's doing, or you wouldn't still be here, because it's one o'clock. Stand with me. Pastor. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I know Hayden, y'all know I love her, but I just feel like God wants us to pray over her womb. <laughs> And um, I don't know what all that would entail, but I just feel like we should pray for her right now. Um, a lot of y'all know her journey, but I just feel that. Okay. Yes. I don't know why the Lord's anointed me to do this, but I have uh, over 400 pictures in my office of people that were uh, barren, could not give birth, and we prayed for them, and God gave them a child. I, I cannot explain that other than the Lord just said for us to pray for them. So... If you want to have a baby, hold your hand up. Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I think she's uh, the one. <laughs> you, want, you, you want to have, she wants four. All right. Okay. I don't know why the Lord does this. What's your name? Can I pray for Hayden? Will that be all right? Stretch your hands toward her. Father, in the name that's above every name, Lord, we're asking for Hayden and her husband in Jesus' name that this will be the season that they would conceive, that the seed and the egg would meet.
There would be 40 weeks of gestation, three trimesters, nine months, healthy baby, healthy mother. Break every word curse, break every soul tie, break every generational curse, break every genetic curse. And let her very soon say, we are expecting a child. And Lord, we believe for a miracle of a baby in this womb. Open the womb, open the womb for the egg and the seed to meet. And we believe for the beautiful conception and the reproduction of a child in in the name of the Lord, in Jesus' name. Not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit. And we believe this in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We believe for you. Hallelujah. Hey, you know, can one? I say something? I'm yeah. really sorry. Okay. Um, so earlier when Pastor said what he said about, I'm not going down there. I'm not asking again. I'm not doing it. And that's what kept coming in my mind. Because for those of you who don't know, you know, we've been going over four and a half years hoping and praying for a baby. And we've just gone through IVF. And this is the month um, for baby month to put the baby back in. And um, when I was down there, the Spirit of the Lord just brought to my mind how Hannah looked so silly and so foolish when she was petitioning to God for her miracle. And the priest pure thought she was drunk. She looked so silly. And um, as I was praying in the spirit, I just felt the spirit. And this takes a lot of faith to share this right now. But I'm standing in faith because the word of God says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So I'm going to stand on it and just have great faith. But the Spirit of God spoke to me and he said, just as Hannah brought her petition to me and I answered her, I'm going to answer your petition. And he said, and this is why you will call your child Hannah, because I'm the God who hears you and I'm the God who answers. Amen. 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 God, love each other. Believe with Hayden. And all of these. And if you gave your heart to Christ this morning, I, I want to meet you right here, okay? Greet somebody. Put an offering in the box out there in the foyer. God bless you. Thank you so much. If you responded to our message today, or if you would like prayer for a specific need, please get in contact with us using the link below. If you would like to worship through giving, you can visit our website, lakecityag.org, and click the Give button. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great week.